You guys, it's Ebro in the morning, and uh, we have the beautiful Laura Styles, and we have Rosenberg, and friend of the station, friend of the show, Talib Kweli is yeah. here. Yeah. Now you think One, we're going to talk three. about bars, and we're going to talk about hip-hop. We might. Bar, son. We might. But first, we got to deal with a discrepancy, a very big one. What's that? Walking Dead is trash. Well, you don't watch Walking Dead. No, but you told me it's trash. I'm telling you right now that Laura, Laura Styles classroom. and I both are up. We are both uh, at our wits' end and considering taking the. Quali disagrees. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait he a second. So you said it's trash, and y'all about to jump ship? No, I don't okay, even look, watch. I'm not it. jumping ship yet. I'm not saying it's complete You're close. trash. But yesterday, I was just a little annoyed. I was a little bored. A little you was annoyed. bored at Tyrese dying, man. That was that was, the, that was the only part Wait, when they Tyrese cut off his arm. The only part died? that had me on edge. Tyrese. No, no, no. Wrong Tyrese. For Transformers? <laughs> no, not that no, Tyrese. No, the two E's. With the two E's. <laughs> um, let me say this. I'll say this about the episode last night. And obviously, spoiler alert, that's how Leb already didn't give you if you hadn't watched it yet. But that's on you, bro. It's 2015. So <laughs> here's the thing. Apple TV, son. No, so here's the thing. They actually did a really nice job with that, and I enjoyed his like um, little visions of the people who already died. Like, I thought the part was actually well done, better than most of the deaths they've ever done. I just think the show has gone from in its peak in season three to them seeing, okay, we're making a shitload of money now. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to rock for another six, seven seasons. Me, and uh, I think it's become garbage. They I really say this. stretch out. Let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. With a show like Walking Dead, I will agree that if killing zombies is not really your thing. It's that, my thing. That, but it, it can't get stagnant with the plot. It gets more and more depress, depressing and destitute over the years. But it's like Currency. When you listen to Currency rap, he raps exclusively about smoking pot. You know what I'm saying? Like, and he's good at it, and you still want to hear it. Well, Walking Dead is like the same thing. It's like, okay, they do one thing, but what they do is better than everything. Push your ramen about cocaine. No, but here's the problem. Exactly, like push your ramen about okay, cocaine. Okay, 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 fine. But then Pusha doesn't randomly have an album where he doesn't rhyme about cocaine until the last minute and for the first 59 minutes does <laughs> fucking nothing which is what they do every week now and they have and they, he doesn't introduce new rappers he doesn't introduce new dudes from Virginia I've never fucking heard of who rap for the whole album I don't know they make new they add new characters all the time you killed off so many characters that when you now don't care about anyone and when I when you there's, look there's four left from the first yeah. season there's four there's Carol there's Carl there's so Quali, Glenn let me ask and you. there's Rick. Quali. Phew. You're, and, um, you're committed to Walking Dead. I am committed. I'm committed because I, I, I need to know what's going to happen. I need to know if it's just going to be the, the apocalypse or somehow. And I think that's what keeps me going. The acting is really done well. And I do agree that there's times when it gets boring and stuff. But when they bring it, when they, bring it they really, really bring it. I just think I agree. I do agree with everything you just said. I just think it's been too long since they've brought it. Laura and they Stouch. have me at the edge. They have Laura me on the Stouch. edge. You've I been passionate on. about this but show for I want to hold on. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I was a little bored. Listen, I hate zombies. But the it, the storylines are so awesome. And I'm always on we're, edge. And I'm ex we're so awesome. And I'm excited about it. <laughs> Yesterday. How about, you get you don't get to talk. You get to start, start comparing it to True Blood, man. No, no I, I, I yeah, different. Listen, oh, different show. Was, listen, I watched True Blood. It was shit. No, it wasn't. You loved it for you skipped the beginning part. You loved no, it no, no, no. for three okay, years. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I loved it. Everybody loved you it. Can't and skip then that it got, part. and then it was shit towards what the end. I, and what I made the argument was the difference to me, and I agree, True Blood got absolutely outrageous. However, it still to me r remained entertaining. And I will say I think there are people, actors on True Blood, who are playing on a whole different stratosphere than most of the actors on Walking Dead, in my opinion. Ah. Like you have um What's his face? Gay, and, and gay, bla guy. gay black dude and who I girl, love. And the girl. What was gay black dude's name? Um, Lafayette. 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 Yeah. Lafayette, the cop, the dude who's from The Wire. Who's the cop. Like they had a bunch of people. Honestly, Bill and Eric. All like they had some actors. Let me put it this way. We were watching yesterday um, Walking Dead, and during Walking Dead, there was a commercial for House of Cards. And I was just like, yo, turn this bullshit off and get yeah, on House, House of, of Cards, Cards right now. House of Cards. That whole you watch House of Cards, Quali? House of Cards is the shit. I mean, that's a different level. Yeah, that's not We're talking about a different level. Different what about Better Call Saul? Do you guys watch that? Did I you guys, watched, did you catch I watched the, first, the episode? first episode of Better Call Saul. It was slow. I felt like if I didn't give a fuck about Breaking Bad, I wouldn't give a fuck about this show um, because of the pacing. It got good towards the end of the first episode. I, I know, and I totally agree with that, but I, 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 you just brought me back to me watching the first episode of Breaking Bad. And even the first episode of Breaking Bad was very, very good. 
it was groundbreaking. It had it been done. The pacing was just as slow. I think that's what Vince Gillian does. Pacing okay. was just as slow. No, but, but while you're wrong, the first scene in the first episode of Breaking Bad was him in the fucking desert in his underwear with the gun pointed at the fucking truck. That's true. That was crazy shit going on. You were that's like, true. what is and this And then you had to me? wait. The payoff was seeing at the end. Whereas and this I, one no, started listen. in Cinnabon. Yeah, no, yeah, it, yeah did. it did. <laughs> and I like that scene, though. I thought that scene was really dope. Yeah, but we give a fuck about Saul. And we give a fuck about right? like the whole thing. Um, it does get there, though. Better Call Saul gets there. There's some, I'm not, you know, Are you I'm predicting saying. it's going to be good, though? You predicting it's going to be really good? It's too early to tell. I'm, I'm in. I'm going to watch. You're going to give it a shot. And they, football's over, and basketball's in the middle, and what else am I watching? Good Empire. And I mean, I watch it. Broad City. Now, listen. Broad City's amazing. Um, my girl watches it. <laughs> I slept on it. But it's, those type of shows for me aren't urgent. They're good. Right, right. Oh, Fresh Off the Boat. Yeah, that's a good one. Fresh off the boat's that. entertaining. I still watch Blackish once in a while, but Fresh off the boat obviously is a peek inside of like a different perspective. Fresh I've off done. the boat, aka when I, I have I don't know one thing about it except I saw the title and I was like, oh, this is the black. They were like Blackish is rocking. Throw on throw off Fresh on the boat too. But there's a twist to it on Fresh off the boat because the is main, it about Asian by the way Asian people? It's about Asian people who move from DC Chinese, to right, the uh, Chinese. Chinese. They move from DC to uh to Orlando to like find their way and whatever. There we go. Um first generation from Taiwan, but the son it takes place in the mid 90s. All he cares about is B.I.G., Wu-Tang, Nas. Oh, that's, oh, that's the twist. Yeah, so he's super. Yeah. Everything is through <laughs> the perspective of him listening to hip-hop oh, tapes. That's amazing. That his parents are like, yo, this shitty music you listen to. And he's the only Asian kid, and he beefs with the only what black What channel's kid. it on? It's on ABC, too. Oh, really? Fresh yeah, off the boat. I've only seen one episode. Network TV. He just mobs him with cross colors. Oh, yeah, forget. he's wearing cross colors. <laughs> yeah, the when did y'all start to, hold on, I was gone three days. Y'all started watching new TV shows? Don't even tell me. Yeah, just what this is a thing? Fresh off the boat? Started. When did it start? Um, last week, man. Damn, y'all just fucking moving up. So yeah, time. fresh off the boat's good. Game of Thrones coming back. Breaking Bad's Gotham. trash. I mean, uh, um, uh, which call is trash? Uh, we, uh, Walking, Walking Dead. Dead. Gotham is pretty good. I watch Gotham. You watch Empire Quality? I just f feel like soap operas aren't for me. Got it. Oh no, no, this one definitely ain't for you. This is a soap opera. This is total soap opera. Cheesy hip hop musical. Yeah. See now, you know, I'm I, I'm 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 friends with a lot of people involved in that. That thing, and I and I'm I, I'm happy that they're successful, and I I think it's doing its job. It's just not necessarily for me. I didn't think it was going to be for me. Yeah, but I opted in on this. I'm in on Empire. It is uh, great shitty TV. Yeah, I could imagine. Well I couldn't imagine it being. TV. I couldn't imagine it being anything. Like I saw some pushback from the activist community. It's like, uh, come on, y'all gonna? It's, it's supposed to be shitty. Yeah, that's it's supposed ever, to be outlandish. It's, it's supposed Fox, to be, man. Yeah. It's you, on Fox. You ever want to say to the activist community, shut up? <laughs> that ever happened? Quiet, that's your community. You ever want to tell them oh, shut I up? It. I love it. I tell them shut up all the time on Twitter. That's true, you do. Because you know, on I Facebook, don't... The, 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 the activist community on my Facebook sometimes, I'm like, God, Where you, can you stop at Facebook? There, there are no activists on Facebook. It's the worst. That's the dregs of society. Oh, it is the worst. Really? Yeah, it's worse than Twitter. Oh, hands Why down. Why do you say that? Why do you say because that? Because Twitter, you have to have some sort of intelligence to make your thought process clear in 140 characters. That's interesting. Twitter weeds out the people who really know how to say what they really want to say. And then when you take it to Medium, that's like the real writers, right? But Twitter weeds it out. Facebook is just anybody. Like me as a, as a quote unquote celeb or whatever. On Twitter, that's my fans. On Facebook, it's people following me because I'm famous. So I could tweet something about Black Lives Matter on Twitter and everybody agree with me. On Facebook, I'm getting a whole bunch of pushback and people calling me niggers and coons and all you. that. Really? You get worse comments on Facebook? I, I It's not even a comparison. See, it doesn't for, even wow. compare. For me on Facebook, I don't get the nasty hate. I get more of that. On, I get most on Instagram probably the most, but maybe a little on Twitter. Facebook, what I get is the fake intelligent chatter. Like the endless, yeah, the endless long, some guy who thinks he's smart writes one post, then his friends have 100, 140 comments of them all pretending to be smart. That's, that sounds like Facebook. I don't I don't even, you know, I, I participate in Twitter. I'm on Facebook every day. I post there, but I don't go and comment and interact with Facebook. Okay. And when I do, it fucks up my whole day. That's interesting. <laughs> so I just I stay away from it because I'll be mad at somebody. Well, now you um, but also uh, with the activist thing, you've been uh the, uh the Ferguson Defense Fund. Are you able to talk about what you've been doing with that? Yeah, it's very, very, very good things going on. So I went down to Ferguson. I was intrigued uh, to see how that movement transformed from people resisting police violence to now people calling them rioters and looters. And so I wanted to see for myself. I met some good people down there. They inspired me to start a fund, the Ferguson Defense Fund. Uh, the 
excuse me, the goal was $25,000. We ended up raising $100,000 after Eric Grodner, yeah. uh, Officer Pantaleo didn't get indicted and Diane w Wilson didn't get indicted. So now I had to form a committee. There's a lot of money, a lot of responsibility. I had to form a committee. I called it the Action Support Committee of community leaders, activists, a lot of people in Ferguson so we could be accountable for what's going on with that money. So we, as of last week, we got 104000 um, we sent 35000 to more, which is Mississippi Organization for Reform and Empowerment. They've been uh, bailing protesters out and providing legal support for people who have been railroaded, mm. people who have been protesting. We have several organizations on the ground that do programs, um, you know, book programs, feeding yeah. people, uh, housing people that we're now giving funds out from that. And we're going to be strategic and it's going to take us a few months to get all the money out. Um, you know, but it's, it's just a good thing, man. And, you know, shout out to uh, OBS uh, and uh, Fellowship of Reconciliation and Dream Defenders and everybody who's been in Ferguson who's also has members on the committee that's helping us to be accountable for this money. Are you proud of what you saw with the uh, protests and are you proud of what you saw here in New York City? Um, mm -hmm. And also, um, we just learned yesterday that um, the rookie officer that shot the kid in Brooklyn in the stairwell mm -hmm. is going to be prosecuted. Um, I think I am. You know, Oprah Winfrey made a statement that she had a lot of uh, attention around saying she don't feel like there's any new leaders. And, you know, I think it's because, with all due respect to her, she don't have children, you know, and anyone who has a child, anyone who has a, per a child of color can see this problem feeling on a different level. Um, and I, I grew up in an era where protest was corny. You know, I was trying to protest against the Kuwait war and our Iraq war when I was in high school. In the 90s, the people wasn't doing that. I looked at it as something that was part of the 60s. But now I see the movement starting with the Arab Spring and the Green Revolution out in the in the, in in Egypt and Iran that turned into that that in turn uh sh helped occupy Wall Street to find its footing. Occupy Wall Street helped uh, us to figure out what's going on with Trayvon Martin. And now it's just a, a, a snowball into where's protest. You know, the protester of Ferguson was almost a time person of the year. Protest movement is now thought of as more serious. And if you're an American and you are patriotic, one of the most patriotic things you yeah. can do is question your government and protest and exercise your freedom. Keep them honest. Yeah. Keep them honest. Talib Kweli is here. I think with that we could transition to your brother right here that this artist, Nico, is. Yeah. Brazilian kid. Because yeah. I know you guys was out there protesting too um, more recently uh, around World Cup. The Olympics. Um, is our Olympics are on the way, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, step up to the mic, bro. Well, I'm going to introduce Nico. Me. Nico is an artist on Javoni Media, born in, in Brazil and grew up in Orlando and one of the greatest MCs I've ever heard and me saying that as a great MC myself it has some weight to this it this guy signed to you yes your album artist. dropped last week Brutus and uh, Nico is I'll let him speak for himself Jesus what an introduction <laughs> that's serious right there <laughs> man. I'm supposed to live up to that so yo do you rock in Brazil or are you just Brazilian that's what you represent you're Brazilian American well I plan on rocking on Brazil very soon I've been living in Florida so that's kind of so I that's not the, the Brazil hip hop scene is not is not something that you have conquered yet no but you plan on Because we had Emicida up here, I and he's been bars. Emicida, yeah. is amazing. Yeah, can you speak in Portuguese? I can. Oh, that's tight. Freestyle Spanish. in Portuguese. You know what I'm saying? Freestyle in Portuguese. So before we get to your bars in Portuguese and just bars in general, mm -hmm. uh, tell the people I asked this of all the artists coming up, and obviously you're here because the brother Kwali was like, yo, I need to introduce you. Normally I would ask Rosenberg to cover this sort of thing for a real late, but let's all do it together as a family. Why, if I'm a hip hop fan, other than Kwali giving you a stamp, should I care about what you have to say? Uh, you shouldn't care. You should just listen to music. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I'm not really with all the politics. I just make jams. That's it, and just I'm music honored. lover music. I mean, I'm honored to to work with Kwali and have that close time, you know, but uh, it's about the music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how did Talib discover you? Um, in Orlando, we did a joint. I got a feature from Kwali, you know, um, and then, you know, what happened, we vibed over a year and then he hit me one day, he heard my new music and he's like, yo, think we should do something, you know? That was here that? I yeah, here I am. How long, uh, when did you, when did you move from Brazil to Orlando when you were a little kid? No, when I was like seven. Okay. Yeah, I lived in Brazil and Argentina and then Florida. You ready for these bars? Are you ready? Listen, bro. I'm just going to freestyle, man. Listen, bro. The music and all that's cool. People care about the music. I think that's a, a commendable thing. It's great. But in a world where there's a lot of rappers come and hit us every day, you got to give me a reason to care. So that's why I asked you. So he's so, going to spit bars. So let's get to it. 
What do you you have any beats? You just want him to go acapella. I wanted to hear him go acapella. I want to him go freestyle. Let's go. Let's go off tone. No beats. Oh God. Okay. Listen, we got put on the spot like we bodybuilding, Ebro. So let me speak to the people. Let me speak to Nico. Nico, llévame a Puerto Rico. Dame un poquito de sofrito. You told me it's different. It's, it ain't no time for the ego. It's time for the art. It's time to rewind the ground with the art. Ain't no time to rewind. It's just time to enlighten with the mind like a diamond. The smile when we shine in timing. Well, I close my eyes because I rap from the side of the mind. It's like Einstein. No equal MC. No need to speak on the beat. Brasileiro. Fale y macoyero no matter to me. She said it's crazy. It's a little bit lazy like Big Eye. Big Eye crazy guy. City guy don't criticize everything I symbolize. That's my drum what I symbolize. Well, I live in the sky with the ribbon in the sky. Ribbon spit ridiculous stuff. Yo, slow it down. We don't want none of that fast stuff. Let me get back to that stuff. Let me get back up. What up? What up? Should pass on my coins. I don't follow you. Me don't follow you. Sing. We just spin that freestyle. That meanwhile, that freestyle. See now. See now. Make a run for three miles. Get him in the treehouse. Boom. Like Ben Wallace to the rebound. You want me to get aggressive? Let me spit it from the top of the dome. My stop. Or probably spit the top of the rhyme. Mix it with the Optimus Prime. I transform. I think I started the box. They scan trauma. I ain't got mine. I'm still bumping camera. That old freestyle. Me and main bro. When the tummy is crazy and safe, flow. Mix it with the rainbow at the end. With the pot of gold. Stop like low. Mix it pop with the rock and roll. Stay me in the hospital. Put a joke on rabble like Pasco. Pasco. Ain't got dough. Mix it with the barnacle. While well, I rap my eyes closed. But I just did on the side. We gotta go. Ain't never met Pop. Ain't never had to. Rap dude. Mm-hmm. It's a little rap. That was a <laughs> that was a rap. fucking different. Top of the dome. Um, Ebro, what are your thoughts? My thoughts? Yes. I think he's a skilled MC. I want to hear the music though. Like he said, it's you about the music. You just said you wanted him to hear. You you <laughs> just said the opposite. You said the music's cool, but I want to hear bars. I wanted to hear his bars. I heard his bars. It was cool. Now I'm gonna hear the but music. You're, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking those are some skills you never heard before. It's an interesting skills that you never heard. What's it gonna sound like on a record? I want to hear the music now. Now he gave me a reason to be interested. Now you're interested. That's all I asked for. Is there anyone um out of Orlando previously that anyone has checked for? Am I forgetting anyone? I mean, that's. I mean, Isn't Plies from Orlando? Plies is no, he's not from Orlando. He's not from Orlando. No. No, I don't think so. Hmm. But he's not from all so there's but no I mean, one who really got on the I mean, map. on a major scale. I yeah, mean, not really, but subjective. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's two worlds. You know. And you threw yeah. in some Spanish at the beginning, then some Portuguese and English. Something like that. Do you do any full songs in Portuguese? I just did full song Portuguese. I do some full songs. You know whatever feels right. Do you? Is, you know. is all your production? Is that all in your crew? Everything's do, in house. Everything's everything. in your crew. Everything from the producing. As thanks, you Joey. You do beats also. I make some beats, you know, but uh, I, I'm blessed to work with one of the illest producers. Thanks, Joey. Colors of the culture. You know, everything we do is in the house. Everything. So, quality, this is interesting. Mm-hmm. Now, I say I, that, I I'm going to go check the music. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, check the music. Like, see, it's interesting that he said we worked on this song together. I went into a nightclub. I was in, my son was going to school in, in Orlando. I went to a nightclub. I met his homeboy. His homeboy was like, yo, we got, we got a, uh, uh, we got some some cash for y'all to do this check this track, which I thought was interesting because it just come up to me in a nightclub. Mm. So I was like, I listened to the album and it was good. Chill Cosby was a mixtape and it was good. I went and did the song. The song is great. The song is Carmen is on the album. Album is on iTunes right now. Brutus. Um, I, I, like Nico said, it's about a year of us hanging out, me coming back and forth to Orlando, and then one night. We just chill on her and freestyle. The same way you asked him to freestyle, that's what got me interested. That's what made me be like, okay, this is this that's it's charismatic. It's something different. It's energetic mm. and charismatic. So he put out a project last year for free called Good Blood. Sangue Bon. Did I say that right? Good Blood, right? And the mixtape is just incredible. All Brazilian samples, but still hip hop. As you can hear from him spitting about Cameron and Big and stuff, Nico grew up on hip hop, but he in, in, in incorporates the Brazilian thing. So it's not like trying to be like a hybrid or like, you know, hip hop reggae or, you know, reggae tone. It's, 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 it's hip hop, just from his perspective. Give it up, man. It was nice meeting you, bro. Are you on tour but yet? Are, is he on tour on right tour. now? Yeah, me and um, Immortal Technique are going on a People's Champion tour, and I spoke to you about is trying Nico to hook up. Is Nico on that? Nico is on that mm-hmm. tour. All right. Yeah. And then you're going to give us some tickets to give away for That's the Urban right. Plaza That's right, Urban Plaza, show. I think April 16th is the date. Okay. And you got some new material coming out as well, Quiet. My next thing that's coming out is me and Mad Lib doing Liberation 2. Yo, yes. Yeah, I love Liberation. Oh, now you're interested. <laughs> well, I love Liberation. <laughs> that's next. Nico's on that. Uh, Pete Rock, Sticky Fingers, Blue. Um, who else on that? But um, that's next. And then I got a solo album called Radio Silence. Got production by Ilman and Q-Tip and Alchemist. And, and that's your, so that what's coming first? Liberation. And then when do we get your solo project? Probably by summer. Okay. Yeah. So you got a lot of work to do. I do. I stay stay focused. Stay busy. Hey, nice meeting you, young man. Thank you for coming through. Good luck to all you with all your endeavors. Quali, give it up for him, y'all. Give it up. Give it up. Quali and Nico is. <laughs>